What happened during the childhood and youth of Jesus? If you search the Bible for anything about it, you won't find much. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke briefly mention his birth, but then quickly move on to his adulthood. The Gospel of Luke even tells a story in which Jesus is left behind by his parents in Jerusalem at the age of 12. But that's about it. Nobody talks about his relationship with other children, his education, the possible use of his powers in childhood, or anything like that. Actually, none of the authors of the books that became the Bible talked about it, but other authors did. In antiquity, several books circulated among Christian communities containing exactly this type of content. The oldest and perhaps most popular of them was the so-called Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas. Don't confuse this with the Gospel of Thomas, which is another text. The text I'm talking about was found in the Nag Hammadi Library, which we can make another video about later. The text I'm referring to is the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas, also known as the Infancy Deeds of our Lord Jesus Christ, which circulated in at least 13 languages in antiquity and the Middle Ages. There is even a possible reference to it in a text from the 6th century after Christ by the Bishop Irenaeus of Lyon. So, it's truly a very old book, and more than that, it's an extremely curious book, because the image of the young Jesus it presents goes against all expectations, or at least it goes against our modern expectations. But without further ado, what does this text actually say? By the way, just a little aside, this video is sponsored by Insider, a loyal partner of this channel, which produces the t-shirts that I always wear in the videos, in the live streams, and anywhere else actually. These tech t-shirts are really excellent. They have anti-odor technology, they don't fade, they're extremely durable, so I highly recommend you check them out on the website. I'll leave the link in the video description and the first pinned comment, and if you use the code STRANGE12, you can get a 12% discount on the entire store. But back to the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas. What does this text say exactly? So, the book begins with the following words. I, Thomas the Israelite, proclaim to you all brothers among the Gentiles to make known the grand childhood of our Lord Jesus Christ and how many things he did having been born in our region. From here, a series of moments from the childhood of Jesus is presented, starting with what is perhaps the most famous episode of all, which appears even in the Quran and Hollywood movies, where Jesus gives life to some clay birds. But this story is much more complex and curious than that. The context of it is actually as follows. When Jesus was five years old, according to the text, he was playing in a brook, separating the waters of the brook into different pools and purifying these waters miraculously using only the power of his word. And during this play, he also took a handful of clay and molded 12 sparrows. But at a certain moment, a man saw Jesus doing these things, and, as it was the Sabbath, he went to Joseph to tell him that his son was profaning the sacred day. So Joseph immediately went to the brook and questioned the young Jesus, saying, Why are you doing these things on the Sabbath, things that are not allowed? And Jesus, hearing this, just clapped his hands and said to the sparrows, Go! And they then came to life and flew away. Everyone was amazed by this, and they went to tell the local authorities what had happened. This story, strange as it may seem on the surface, refers to common themes that we also find in the canonical Gospels. However, here we find them in a more allegorical form. In the canonical Gospels, Jesus is also confronted for violating the Sabbath, for example, and these 12 sparrows to which Jesus says go probably refer to the sending of the 12 apostles. We will see that these allegories appear throughout the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas. But for now, let's continue with the story of the claybirds. After sending the birds away, the text says that the son of a scribe, at the same time as this play by the brook, took a branch and began to break up the pools that Jesus had made. And Jesus, seeing this, said to the boy the following, 
O oh, unjust, ungodly and foolish one, what wrong did the pools and the waters do to you? Behold, now you shall wither as a tree, and shall not bring forth either leaves or root or fruit. And immediately the boy withered completely, and the parents of the boy facing this went to Joseph, complaining about what had happened. But in the meantime, another thing happened. The young Jesus was crossing the village, and a boy ran past him and ended up bumping into him. Because of this, Jesus became extremely angry and said the following, You shall not go on your way. And the boy then fell and died on the spot. The parents of this boy also went to Joseph and said to him, You cannot live with the boy like this among us in the village, for he is killing our children. So Joseph finally decides to scold Jesus more assertively. But Jesus knowing that this scolding came from accusations by other people, things that Joseph had not seen but that had been reported to him, makes all his accusers in the village blind. And Joseph obviously does not like this reaction to the scolding and gives Jesus a literal ear pull, pulling Jesus' ear with force. And Jesus also becomes deeply annoyed by this and says to Joseph, It is enough for you to seek and not to find. Surely you have not acted wisely. Do you not know that I am your own? Jesus turns the scolding back on Joseph, and whatever the exact meaning of these words, according to the text, a teacher who was nearby is very impressed by Jesus' way of speaking to his father and volunteers to begin Jesus' formal education. The problem is that during the lessons, Jesus ends up teaching much more to the teacher than the teacher teaches. For example, the teacher starts teaching the Greek letters to Jesus, but Jesus interrupts and begins to teach the secret and deeper meaning of the letters to the teacher, which leaves the teacher very embarrassed for not having that more advanced knowledge, and he ends up returning the boy to Joseph, saying the following, I cannot endure the severity of his gaze, nor understand even once his word. This boy is not born of this world. He must have been born before the creation of the world. And the teacher also says to Joseph, Take him to your house. He is great. He is either a god or an angel, or what shall I say, I do not know. After this, two other teachers try to educate Jesus. The first of them also begins with lessons in Greek letters, and Jesus also interrupts by talking about the meaning behind each of the letters. But this new teacher is less patient than the first one, so he immediately slaps Jesus on the head. Jesus, of course, immediately curses the teacher, and he falls down stiff on the ground. Finally, a third teacher, even knowing about the previous stories, which is to say, being very brave, asks for the opportunity to teach Jesus, and he also ends up being educated by the boy. But instead of losing his patience, he acknowledges Jesus' superiority, and because of the humility of this teacher, Jesus decides to resurrect the other teacher whom he had cursed. Apart from these school adventures, the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas also tells various other stories that take place in different contexts. But since there are many, I'll summarize here just a few that I consider the most interesting. In one of them, for example, Jesus goes out with his brother James to gather wood, but a viper bites James's hand and he starts losing strength. So Jesus quickly blows on the bite on James's hand and this causes the viper to explode and his brother recovers. In another very interesting story, it is said that Jesus was playing on a roof with other boys and one of them ends up falling and dying accidentally. The other boys run away scared because of this, but Jesus stays at the scene. So when the parents of the deceased boy appear, they immediately accuse Jesus of throwing their son from the roof. That's what it seemed like at first, judging by the scene they were seeing. But Jesus, of course, had not done that and denies the accusation. However, the parents insist on blaming and insulting Jesus. So Jesus jumps from the roof, goes to the body of the dead boy and shouts, Zeno, which was the boy's name, get up and tell me, did I throw you from the roof? And the boy, Zeno, gets up and responds, no, sir, you did not throw me, but you raised me. 
and the parents of the boy are absolutely astonished by this and thank God for that miracle. In several other stories, the young Jesus does spectacular things like resurrecting children and adults. But there are also stories in which Jesus does things that are impressive, but not exactly miraculous. For example, in one of them, one day, Joseph was building a bed for a rich man. This was Joseph's trade. He was a carpenter, but he ends up making a piece too short for the bed, and this threatens to make him throw his entire project in the trash. But Jesus finds a clever technical solution there to fix the problem almost like an engineering feat and saves the day of his father's work. So, in general, these stories from the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas affirm not only the magical power, so to speak, of Jesus, capable of giving life to clay birds or resurrecting the dead, but also his intelligence and his knowledge of human and divine things. Oh, and there's one last story that's worth mentioning, which is the story that concludes this book. It's another very famous story, but this last story is not famous because of this apocryphal gospel, but because of a canonical gospel, which is the Gospel of Luke. This is the story I mentioned at the beginning of when Mary and Joseph go with Jesus to Jerusalem when he was 12 years old, and on the way back they end up leaving the boy behind. So when they finally realize that Jesus was not with the group, they go back and find the boy sitting with various teachers, discussing about the law and the prophets, and impressing everyone with his knowledge of the scriptures. This story, as I said, is in the Gospel of Luke, and it's one of the very few passages we find in the canonical Gospels about the childhood of Jesus. In a way, as we've seen in the video about the Gospel of James, this silence about what happened in the early years of Jesus was probably a decisive stimulus to drive the production of these later Gospels that specifically addressed the origin and childhood of Jesus. Well, before concluding, it's worth considering a question that inevitably arises throughout the reading of this book, which is as follows. How can the greatest character of Christianity, Christ himself, be represented as a child apparently so ill-mannered that he kills friends and teachers for any little thing and doesn't even accept a scolding from his own father? How could a text like this have been useful in promoting worship of Jesus, strengthening his identification as the Messiah, as the Son of God, as the Savior of humanity, or anything like that? So, despite the young Jesus of the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas, not being exactly the humblest or the most welcoming, he is certainly very powerful. He is the one who takes people's lives and restores them, purifies what is impure with just the power of his word. He knows all things, whether human or divine. So he really has many characteristics of a god. And even some more frightening things, like killing a boy just because he accidentally bumped into him, can be considered perfectly divine if we consider the imagery about God that existed in that context. Perhaps you know, for example, the story of Uzzah and the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament. In this story, the Ark of the Covenant, where God was enthroned according to the text, was being transported on a cart and at a certain moment, the oxen carrying this cart stumble and the cart jolts. At this, a man named Uzzah, who was accompanying the transportation of the ark, immediately stretches out his hand and grabs the ark so that it does not fall. And because of this, immediately, the wrath of God is kindled against Uzzah, as the text says, and Uzzah is struck dead right there and falls dead beside the ark. This story about the untouchable and terrifying holiness of God and several other similar stories from the Hebrew Bible may have inspired this untouchable and terrifying image of the young Jesus from the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas. As the famous saying goes, the feared leader gets better obedience than the loved one. So perhaps the Gospel of the Infancy of Thomas sought to promote Christian piety more along these lines not so much by the image of the Lamb of God, but by that of the Lion of Judah. Not so much by the love of Christ, but by the fear of the Lord. 
The message is more or less the following. Think twice before wanting to know more than Jesus, like the teachers in the story. Think twice before accusing him of anything, like those who ended up blind in the story. And think twice before getting in his way, like the boy who was running and then ended up dead. But anyway, that's the gospel of the infancy of Thomas. As I said in the introduction, this is a book that has been widely read since the early history of Christianity. It still exists today in the form of dozens of manuscripts in various languages, and it can be read now in Portuguese as well, thanks to the excellent translation by Professor Frederico Lorenzo from the University of Coimbra. I'll leave the link to purchase this book, including in the video description, for those who want to read this text directly and the other apocryphal Gospels that are there. And I'll leave here also as a suggested video to watch after this one, the video about the Gospel of James, in which I talk a bit more about the historical context of these external Gospels to the Bible. But for now, that's it. The references consulted, as always, are there in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to leave your own interpretations of these stories in the comments. Until the next video, take care.